Hi friend, David Henry here from LearnStageLighting.com and in this video I want to talk to you about lighting consoles. In particular, intermediate level lighting consoles. These are the lighting consoles that sit between the entry level stuff and the professional grade. And for a lot of people who are looking for a lighting console, an intermediate level console is a really good choice. The big benefits of something that's in the middle is you're not hampered by the base level limitations that you might have in a basic console, such as a certain number of fixtures you can control, um, that limitation is usually blown out of the water, a certain amount of cues, um, a speed that you can program at, particular hardware, etc. For a lot of people, you might have an entry level console and you might say, okay, I'm moving past this. I'm hitting a ceiling where this thing can't program the way I need to, it can't control all the fixtures I need to, or it's just too simplistic and I want to do more complex things. Well, if that's the case for you, then you may want to look to a intermediate level lighting console. An intermediate level lighting console can be a really great choice because it gives you more complexity and more programmability than that entry level stuff while not having all the complexity of a professional grade controller. The quick way that I love to explain this to people is that a professional level console can do anything. And I love them. I love them personally. But if you're just starting out, you may not need to do everything. And to be able to use a console that can do everything, you have to learn how to do everything or at least get close to it. Because there are so many features, so many options, and if you accidentally touch something you didn't mean to, you may not know how to get out of it. An intermediate level lighting console solves this problem. Now, here on Learn Stage Lighting, you may hear me talk about a few intermediate level consoles that I generally recommend. They are in no particular order the Work Pro Light Shark, MTEX D Pro, the Light Key software, um, and there are others as well. But those are the main three that I talk about here. And what these consoles do is they broaden the gap, and this is a gap that didn't used to have anything in it. They, they bring that gap together of simplistic versus being able to do really cool and more complex things, and they, they sit in the middle where it's still pretty easy to learn these consoles, but they can't do, and they can do some great things, but they can't do everything, all the complexity that the big guys, that the professional grade stuff can't. So, how do you look, how do you choose an intermediate level lighting console and how do you know if it's right for you? Well, it's pretty simple. Before I finish this point, actually, I'd like to ask you to subscribe here on YouTube if you haven't already, so you get the latest here from Learn Stage Lighting. How do you choose and how do you know if an intermediate level console is right for you? Well, as I mentioned before, if you've used something basic and you feel like you need to go to the next level, intermediate might be the next step. But professional grade might also be your next step. How do you tell the difference? How do you know which one's right for you? Well, there's two main things I like to look at when I'm talking with people. And, and truth be told, in Learn Stage Lighting and here on YouTube and inside of Learn Stage Lighting Labs, this is the question that I work with the most. How do I choose the right console and what console's right for me? And the reason why I talk about this so much and the reason why it's so important is that the console is the brain of your lighting system. Choose well with the console and you'll be happy. You'll be able to program what you need, have great playback options, and really make a great light show. Conversely, take the same lights and have a console that's not suited for what you need or just plain a bad console and you'll be hitting your head against the wall, you'll be frustrated, and you won't get the results you want. So this console thing's kind of a big deal. And so there's two things that I really like to look at when I'm helping people choose a console. The first is technical. Okay, this is pretty simple and probably what most people look at. When you look at the spec sheet, when you look at the information, the marketing, the manual for this particular console or software that you're interested in, does it meet the technical needs of yourself today and what you see needing in the future? Does it have enough universes or channels 
to be able to control all the lights that you desire. Can it control the lights that you have? Can you get profiles for it? Uh, if you have multi-part lights, can it control multi-part lights, etc., etc.? These are all things you really want to consider before buying and check it out and make sure that all that functionality is there so that you can choose wisely. Then, once you get past the basic technical level, it hits the personal level. I've heard it said a lot of times that choosing a lighting console for a programmer, whether you're a hobbyist or a pro or anywhere in between, is a very personal thing. And that can be true. And, and where that reigns in, it's all about expectations. Okay, and it's all about what you need to be able to do. When I recommend a console here, and that goes for D-Pro, that goes for the Light Shark, that goes for Light Key. All three of those. Very great consoles, intermediate level. I recommend them all. You can get links to info about them below. But when I recommend, and then next week we'll have a video going deep into those, but when I recommend a console, I recommend it because I know it's a solid console that is at least relatively bug-free. No console is 100% bug-free and software updates change that from time to time that has a good development team behind it, and that can make great shows. But then sometimes, people go out, they say, oh, well, David recommends this, I'll buy it, without really considering themselves. And one of two things happens. Either the person goes, this is the best thing ever, it works great, it does everything I need, I'm happy, or they come back and they say, this console frustrates me, it can't do everything I want, etc., etc. And sometimes even, for the sake of example, these two users, these two people, could literally have the same lighting setup and could be lighting the same exact thing. For, you know, maybe they're both lighting bands, maybe they're both lighting DJs, etc., etc. So what's the difference? Well, the difference is personal expectation and, and what you want to be able to program. And this is the biggest sticking point for these intermediate level consoles, okay? they're not going to be able to do everything a professional grade console does. More so than that, if you've worked with other consoles before, be aware that the workflow in these consoles or software is going to maybe different, and not necessarily is going to be different, but may be different than what you're used to, and you may have to adapt the way that you program and the way that you lay things out to these intermediate consoles. I like to explain it this way because ultimately the really great thing about these intermediate level desks is that they offer you the ability to quickly and easily get started and do some pretty complex things. But what separates them from a pro grade console is the fact that there are shortcuts in there. Things are simpler, easier to work with, easier to program which also then brings on limitations, right? If things are limitless, like with most professional grade consoles, they're nearly limitless, it takes more time to program them. It takes more time to learn how to use them. When you limit things a little more, like these intermediate level consoles do, then you suddenly are able to learn it quicker, program f faster, etc. And so that's why I recommend these intermediate level consoles, and I have a lot of people who love these things. And so um, here's my homework for you, okay? This video is really just to help you dive deeper and get you thinking if you're considering an intermediate level lighting console. And then next week we're going to come back and I'm going to look at and compare and contrast some of my favorite intermediate level consoles and also some of the ones I don't like so much. We're going to talk about pricing, we're going to talk about function, we'll talk about features, and I'm going to show you why I choose the ones I choose and where they're good and where they're lacking, okay? Because ultimately, I want you guys to be able to make the most informed, best decisions that you can. And with that, actually, I want to introduce to you guys my Learn Stage Lighting Gear Guide. Go ahead and download it. I've got a link below as well as here on the end card. And it's just the gear that I recommend with some brief descriptions for each level of lighting, basic or intermediate, so that you can look at these and say, okay, what lights does David recommend? Because I go through, I'm always paying attention, I'm always trying stuff out, and I'm always looking for the best bang for the buck of features versus price. I want something that's gonna perform at a great price, 
I find the best ones out there and I highlight them in my gear guide. It's totally free for you when you sign up, so check it out here.